Today, I am going to go over the practice test. The first one, it says in 1 and 2, solve by graphing. Label the intersection where they cross. So to graph, I'm going to start at this number. And this is my starting line. So from this point, I go up 3. Now I'm going to move down 2. There's no number on bottom, so it's a 1. So from this point, I go down 2, over 1. Down 2, over 1. Down 2, over 1. You can also go up 2 and left 1 if I need to. So on the second one, my starting point, negative 1. So this is my starting line, down 1. Up 2, over 1. Up 2, over 1. Up 2, over 1. Now I can just quickly connect them. And they're crossing right there. So that point over 1, up 1. That's my answer. All right, the second one. Starting point is 5. From this line, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's my dot. I'm going to zoom that in just a little bit so you can see really clear. Now I'm going to move, because it's negative, down 1, over 3. Down 1, over 3. Down 1, over 3. Or I can do up 1, left 3. Up 1, left 3. This one, my starting point, negative 2. Up 2, over 1. Up 2, over 1. Up 2, over 1. Oh, there's a cross. Up 2, over 1. And they're crossing right there, which would be the point. First you go over, 1, 2, 3. Then you go up, 1, 2, 3, 4. 3, 4. So our third question asks, is the given graph the solution to the system listed? So I'm going to start by graphing. Negative 1. Does it start at negative 1? I, you notice I skipped this equation. It's a little harder to graph in standard form, so I went for the slope-intercept form. And I looked, and I said, negative 1. No, it does not start at negative 1. It's below. Right away, I know it doesn't match. But I'm going to go ahead and solve it anyway. So it starts here at negative 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1. Up, left, up, left, up, left, up, left. And then this one, x plus 3y equals 5. On the standard form, the slope is going to be negative. What number is in front of the x? So that's a 1. And what number is in front of the y? A 3. So negative, number in front of the x, number in front of the y. And it happens to be negative, then be negative over negative. In this case, it's positive, so it ends up negative 1 third. Then my intercept, my y-intercept, is when x is 0, 5 over 3. That's kind of hard to graph. But my x-intercept would be when x, or when, I said that wrong last time, when x is 0, the 5 thirds. On the x-intercept, it's when y is 0. So when y is 0, what is x? 5. So... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's the point. And then we're going down 1 over 3. Down 1 over 3. Down 1 over 3. Down 1 over 3. Crossing right there at 2, negative 3. Now you didn't have to do all that. All you have to do is say yes or no. Look at the graph. Decide if it's been graphed right. But I wanted to show you how to graph them because that could be helpful in deciding if it's graphed right. Now we go to substitution. 4 to 5, solve by using the substitution method. Show your work. Now, I know for your quizzes that there's a lot of you that like to use one method and you're afraid to use the other methods. In this test, I need to see all three methods and I will be looking at work. So for number four, think of it as sports. This player, here's my Y. 
Y is going out. This Y is going in. But it's not going in in that form. It's going in as 3X minus 3. So the Y is replaced by what Y is equal to. So you have 10X minus 2. The Y came out, and I replaced it with what Y was equal to. 3X minus 3 equals 10. Now I have to solve that ugly equation. Which One of the problems with this is it's a lot of solving, a lot of steps. 10x, 2 times 3, minus 6x, negative 2 times negative 3, positive 6, equals 10. 10 minus 6 is 4x. Excuse me, I should say 10x minus 6x is 4x. I'm going to move that 6 over, and I get 10x, 4x equals 4. Then divide by 4, and I get x equals 1. Am I done? No, I've done the work and I'm still going to do more. So right here I take this y equals 3x minus 3, and I'm going to substitute again. I'm going to replace this x with what x is equal to. So I'm putting a 1 here. 3 times 1 minus 3. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. So y equals 0. My answer, 1, 0. If I wanted to check myself, 10 times 1 is 10, minus 2 times 0 is 0, so 10 minus 0 is 10. 3 times 1 is 3, 3 minus 3 is 0, so it works. All right, on number 5, we have a problem. We don't have a letter by itself. Which one's going to be the easiest to get by itself? Well, this one already doesn't have a letter in front of it. So that's going to be the easiest one to get, but not a letter. It doesn't have a number in front of it. So because it doesn't have a number and all the others do, it's the easiest one to get by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is minus a 3x. That gives me y equals negative 9 minus 3x. So the y is by itself. At that point, I can substitute. And I'm going to substitute right here for this y. And you can substitute for x or y at any point. Replace this y with what y is equal to. Minus 9 minus 3x equals 2. So we have the 2x out front. Negative 2 times negative 9 is plus 18. Negative 2 times negative 3 plus 6x equals 2. 2x plus 6x is 8x plus 18 equals 2 minus the 18 from both sides. 8x equals negative 16. Divide by 8. And then I get x equals negative 2. Then, am I done? No. I take that negative 2 back here. Negative 9 minus 3 times negative 2. Negative 3 times negative 2 is 6. Negative 9 plus 6 is negative 3. So x is negative 2. y is negative 3. So then we plug in. Negative 3 plus 3 times negative 2. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 3 plus negative 6 equals negative 9. So we know we did it right. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Negative 4 plus 6 is 2. So because both of them check out, it checks. Number 6. Given an ordered pair and a system, determine if the ordered pair is the system's solution. Show your So to show my work, I'm going to put this in place of x and this in place of y and see if it's true. So I do negative 3. Oh, you notice the y is in front, so I replace the y plus 3 times 5. Negative 3 plus 3 times 5 is 15. So negative 3 plus 15 is negative 12. That's the same. It has to be the same in both equations. So then I do 2 times 5 minus 2 times negative 3. 2 times 5 is 10. Negative 2 times negative 3 is 6. Gives me the 16. 
They're the same in both. Is it a solution? Yes. All right, in seven and eight, solve by using the elimination. That was really good grammar. I should say solve by using the elimination method. Show your work. Elimination is my absolute favorite. I love it. So in order to have it do elimination, let me try that sentence again. In order to do elimination, you have to have the x is the same, or you have to have the y is the same. In this case, there's nothing I can times 2 by friendlyly to get 5. But I could times 1 by 3 and have 3. So I'm going to go ahead and times the bottom by 3. And I did say you want them the same, but you actually want one to be positive and one to be the negative, but the same number. So this would be a positive 3. When I times this, this would be a negative 3. So they're the same number. They're both 3's, but one's positive and one's negative. So I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite this first sentence. 2x plus 3y equals 18. 3 times 5. 15x. 3 times 1 minus 3y. And we need to do 3 times 11. The number one mistake I saw in class today was not times that 3 by the 11. Which gives us 33. Now those go away when we add them together because 3 minus 3 is 0. 2 plus 15 is 17. 18 and 13, that's not 18 and 13. 18 and 33 make 18 plus 33, 51. Divide by 17. 51 divided by 17 gives us a nice pretty 3. Then I got to go back and substitute. That substitution never goes away. I can substitute into either equation. I'm going to choose the top equation because it has all positive numbers. Some people would say they want to choose the bottom because the y is by itself. I just don't like negatives. I avoid them at all costs. But it wouldn't be wrong to choose the bottom because the y is by itself either. It's whichever one you want. 2x, we're going to replace the x with the 3, plus 3y equals 18. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3y equals 18. Minus the 6 from both sides, I get 3y equals 12, divide by 3y equals 4. So the answer is 3, 4. All right, the next one's a little harder. There's nothing I can times a 3 by that will friendly, there's not a friendly number I can times a 3 by that will give me 5, and there's not a friendly number I can times a 4 by that can give me 7. Which means I'm going to have to multiply both equations by a number to get them the same. So I have two options. I could take this 5 and times it here and the 3 here. Or I could take the 7 and times it here and the 4 here. Honestly, it doesn't matter. I'm going to choose the 7 and the 4 because this one's already positive and this one's already negative. So I already have opposite signs and I like that. So I'm going to times everything by 7 and everything by 4. Take your 7 from here, 4 from here. 7 times 3 is 21x. 7 times 4, 28y. 7 times 10, 70. 4 times 5, 20x. 4 times 7, 28y. 4 times 3, 21 plus 20 is 41x. 70 plus 12 is 82. Divide by 41. x equals 2. Now I'm going to look and I'm going to say, hmm, which equation looks friendlier? Again, I avoid negatives, so I'm going to choose the bottom one because it's all positive. Some people might say the top equation, and that's fine. I just am... Avoiding negatives. That's my method. 5 times 2. I took the 2 and put it where the x was. Plus 7y equals 3. 5 times 2 is 10. Plus 7y equals 3. Minus the 10 from both sides. I get 7y 
is equal to negative 7. Oh, I didn't succeed in avoiding the negatives. Divide by 7, and I get y equals negative 1. So my answer to negative 1. All right. In 9 and 10, it says solve each problem by any method. The answer will be an ordered pair, no solution, or many solutions. Show your work. On the top one, I'm going to go with elimination. Substitution is definitely a possibility because I could minus the 2y and then replace the x. And if substitution is your favorite method, absolutely go for it. Elimination is my favorite, so I'm going to go with elimination. I did see a couple of kids try graphing, and you can. The graphing is a little harder because it's going to come out with fractions, but it's not. Off the table is an option. So, in order to do uh, elimination, i got to get these numbers the same. That's a 2, that's a 3. Uh, there's not a friendly number I can times 2 by, but that's a 1 and a 4. So if I times by a 4, they'll be the same. But I need 1 to be negative, so I'm going to times by a negative 4. So negative 4 times x, I'm drawing it out to show you where I'm writing it, negative 4x, negative 4 times 2, negative 8y, negative 4 times negative 1, positive 4. Add them together, 4 minus 4 is 0, 3 minus 8 is negative 5, negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5, divide by negative 5, and I get y equals 1. At this point, I'm stuck with substitution. I can use the top equation, I can use the bottom equation, or I could use my new equation. Mm. I'm going to pick the top one just because it has a little less. It does have that negative, but they both have negatives. x plus 2 times 1 equals negative 1. x plus 2 equals negative 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Minus a 2 from both sides. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. I get negative 3, 1. All right, number 10. I'm going to have to say substitution on this one because the y is already by itself. When the letter is already by itself, substitution is really your best option. Graphing is a possibility, but I just, with graphing, you're going to have fractions because it's a 3, a 2, and a 4. So we're going to go with substitution. I'm going to take the y out, and I'm going to put the negative 2x in. As I'm doing this, I want you to tell you that you could do any method. Go for If you wanted to add 2x and then do elimination, you could as well. Let me just backtrack and say that. Okay, so I've got 4x plus 2. Take the y out, and I'll replace it with negative 2x plus 1. And I get it is equal to negative 3. 4x, 2 times negative 2 is minus 4x, 2 times 1 is plus 2, equals negative 3. 4x minus 4x is 0, so I get 2 equals negative 3. Yeah, 2 doesn't equal negative 3. That's what? No solution, because 2 does not equal negative 3. All right, 11 and 12. Set up a system of equations and then solve it. In a coin bank, there are 48 coins, all quarters and nickels. They're worth a total of $6. Find how many quarters and nickels are in the bank. So we now we've got quarters and nickels, and there's 48 of them. And then we go to the value. Quarters are 25 cents, 0.25. Nickels are five cents, and we have a total of six dollars. Now, some students don't like to necessarily do this with the decimals, so they'll do 25Q, 5N, I forgot the N, whoops, and 600, and just do everything cents, so they don't have to go to the decimal. You can do that. I'm going to just do the decimal because that's how I wrote it. All right, substitution or elimination, I'm going to go for... Elimination, that's 0.05. I need this one to be 0.05. So no times this by negative 0.05. Excuse me, negative 0.05q, negative 0.05n, and 48 times 0.05, negative 0.05.
2.4. Add them together, 25 minus 5, 20 cents. Those are gone. 6 minus 2.4 is 3.6. Divide by the point 20. And I get 18. So quarters is 18. And there's 48 total coins. 48 minus 18. There are 30 nickels. So that would be the Q plus N equals 48. Plug in the 18 for the Q minus the 18. I did that kind of in my head, so I wanted to show you where I got it. All right, number 17. Samantha has been working and earned $3,000. She's going to divide it and place it in two accounts at the bank. The first account will earn 5% interest. We know this is not a realistic problem. And the second account will earn 9% interest. If she earned a total of $210. So this equation is all about interest. So we're going to say equal to 210. And then she had $3,000 divided between them. So that would be x plus y is 3,000. So again, I could do elimination. I could do graphing. I really am just really partial to um, elimination. Substitution is an option. I can times by 0.05 or I can times by 0.09 and get them the same. I'm going to times by 0.05 because they're all positive. I'm going to need to times this by a negative. So I do negative 0.05x minus 0.05y. 3,000 times 0.05 is negative 150. 0.05 minus 0.05 is 0. 0 0.09 minus 0 0.05 is 0 0.04. 210 minus 150 is 60. Divide by 0 0.04. And I get 1,500. Now the y was the one by the 0 0.09, so that's a 9% account has 1,500. Which means that the 5% account has also 1,500. And I will add some commentary. I know our story problems are not always realistic. You're not going to get 5% interest. You're not going to get 9% interest very likely at a bank. And if you were getting 9% interest, you wouldn't put half your money in the 5% account, most likely. But for the sake of the problem, you can do the problem and understand how it works. All right, jumping over to the last page. Number 13. Given the event in the graph, what does the solution shown on the graph mean? Maria loves swimming at the local fitness club. She can buy a yearly membership for $175, or she can pay $15 a month. Assuming that she will go every month, which plan should she purchase? So right here is where they cross. So what that means is $175 no how many months, or $15 a month that's going up every month. Right where they cross is where the monthly fee becomes the better deal than the yearly membership. And so that point would be 11 and 175 give or take. And it means after 11 months, the monthly fee is the better deal. And before that, at 11 months, they are the same price. And before 11 months, um, the yearly membership is better because it's high. I said that wrong. Before 11 months, the monthly fee is better. After 11 months, the yearly membership is better. I am sorry. This one's better because it's lower here. This one's better because it's lower here. So, point of clarification. The monthly fee is better 
until 11 months. After 11 months, the yearly fee is better. At 11 months, it's the same price. And really, if you can just tell me, what does the solution show? It says that is the point where the both plans are the same price. That's really what I need to be able to say. The point where both plans are the same price. All right, number 14. We are still working on some equations. This is some good equation practice. Never heard anybody. So we are going to do number distribute 14. 18 minus x, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. Add the x minus the 2. 18 minus 2 is 16, 4 plus 1 is 5x, divide by 5, and we get 16 over 5. This one minus the w from both sides, get negative 8, is equal to negative 2w, divide by negative 2, and I get w equals negative 4. Alright, these ones I said skip, and I'm not relenting, we'll learn that later. 18 through 20, to determine whether, try it again. In 18 through 20, determine which system in column A is the best setup for solving it through substitution, graphing, or elimination. Place the letter next to your choice in column B and explain why. Do not solve. All right, so you're matching these with these. This one, you've got that y minus y. That's really nice for... Elimination! This one you got that y by itself. That's really nice for substitution. This one, we could times it by 4 pretty easily and do elimination. This one, you could do substitution pretty easily. This one, honestly, you could go either way here. You just need to justify it. You times it by the 2, and you're going to have um, an easy elimination. Um, add the 2y, you're going to have an easy substitution. D could go either way. Just give me a good reason why. This one, you got the 100 the same elimination. When is graphing better? Graphing is going to be better when you have like a y equals by itself. If you have y equals and y equals, then you could justify substitution then, because you can just replace the y with the y. But if you have a nice friendly like equation, something like that is when I would really recommend graphing. I don't see any like that here where all the y's are already by themselves. You could make a tentative argument and say, well, you could just divide by 4 here and you'd have the y by itself. So E might be graphing because if you divide by 4, you have the y's. And that would be fine. So basically, after you tell me the letters, you've got to tell me the y. So on this one, the y's can be eliminated. Y's can be eliminated. This one, why is it better? Because the y is by itself. So substitution. This one, if you divide by 4, it lends itself to graphing because the y's are by itself, because both y's are by themselves. Or you could say substitution because the y's are already by itself. Either way, that's why the y matters, because you have to tell me the y. On this one, I would say really strong substitution. You got the y by itself. Y is by itself. This one, you can go with substitution or elimination, depending on your reasoning. This one, because of 100x, strong for elimination. All right, thanks for watching. I know this is a really long video. Hopefully it helps you kind of understand a little bit better. Good luck on your test.